We are back, and Rick, I don't know if you can get this, but the early show is preparing for the fashion show that it will have on its show, and we're going to talk about that. The fashion show will be telling us how to go from summer to fall, and you can do it just using basic clothes. But first, and their music, just so you know, their music might interrupt our oh, segment here. So you know, that's it's why we live, to, part of the reason why we wanted to point live out live webcast that, that happens. You they're know, getting started. We if. If the music gets in the way of this interview, we'll just do it again. How about that? But we are joined by Farnoosh Tarabi. You are a financial expert, and you're going to help us get through those awkward money situations that sometimes we find ourselves in, right? Yeah, the ones where you can't get calculators for, the sticky money issues that you find yourself in. I try to help. Okay, well, great. Let's talk about the first situation. The group gift. Yeah. You know, your friends all decide to buy another friend a gift, and then your friends think that everyone's a billionaire. Oh, there's the fashion show. <laughs> anyway, your friends think that they decide on a gift that's, that's out of your budget. What do you do? Well, I don't think you should have to contribute, and one way to sort of gently get yourself out of that situation is to just say, look, um, email the group and say, I think this is a great idea. Unfortunately, I've already bought a gift for our friend, or I already have a gift in the works but maybe next year. And you know what, I bet you there are other friends who feel the same way as you do, but they were too intimidated or too shy to say anything. So I think doing that, not only will you be speaking for yourself, but probably some others in the group. And they may follow suit. Okay, that's some great advice. Yeah. And here's a situation I always find myself in, the group dinner. You yeah. know, you go out with all of your friends and you know, maybe someone, has steak and five bottles of wine and someone else has salad. Yeah. So how do you how do you split the bill? Well, I think that before the even, even the bill comes, as soon as you sit down for the meal and you can anticipate that this is how the night's going to go, if these are your friends, you know usually how it's going to end up, ask the server for a separate check. Pull him or her aside quietly and ask for a separate check. Now, if you've got a nosy neighbor who wants to know why are you getting a separate check, you can say one of two things. Either be honest and say, look, I'm trying to budget this month and it helps to have a receipt because then I know how much I've spent. That's fair. Who doesn't want to save? Or if you don't really want to say that, uh, another technique that works often is saying, look, I might have to skip out early tonight. So I want to know how much I definitely owe you guys so I don't stiff you at the end of the night they'll appreciate that and of course you don't have to leave early it's just a way to as a preemptive strike to explain why you want the receipt and to not have to worry about settling the bill by splitting it when you all you had was like water with lemon and a side salad yeah so if you ask for that separate check you have to tell people though you know cuz they don't of course yeah and i think any of those two excuses works and it doesn't make you look like a cheapskate or somebody who wants to be a buzzkill but just somebody who's a little more conscious and actually if you use the second excuse which is we may I may have to duck out early I think that's quite respectful to say I just want to know how much I owe before I leave so I leave enough yeah okay um, okay here's another situation um, <laughs> financial experts tell me what to do what do you do when you lend money to a friend I know that my parents always said with your friends, no, don't live with them and don't lend them money. Is it something that you should just avoid completely? I don't think you should avoid it completely, but your parents are right in the sense that when you give money to a friend or a family member, it can get very sticky very fast. Um, and in fact, research shows that when you give money to a close friend or family member, very rarely does that money get returned in full. So how do you even like, so if you do plan on giving money away to anybody, uh, basically assume that it's a gift because you're probably not going to get that money back. Now, I don't think that you should never say uh, yes to a friend, but it, especially this is a friend who's given you money in the past and you've given them the money back. This is something that maybe it's time to repay the favor, but um, ask your friend why they need the money. If it's to, let's say, you know, just get by for the month, maybe there are other ways you can help them without writing a check. Maybe you can, you know, do potlucks together. Maybe you can babysit her kids for a couple of nights so she can save on that. Maybe she can, if she's going to an interview and needs a suit, maybe she can shop in your closet. There are a lot of ways to be friendly and giving without giving money. That's a great advice. What a, what's another sticky situation? Um, how about, let's see, charity solicitations from your coworkers. When Girl Scout cookie time comes around or 
you know, my sickle cell run walk, would you please donate? I think that those are all great charities and you know, the tricky thing is as a coworker or as just anybody who doesn't necessarily want to give to that charity, um, how do you come off not looking like a Scrooge? So here's my advice. If your coworker is hounding you for money for her charity or his charity, I think you first acknowledge how wonderful the charity is, but then say, unfortunately, I've already used up my charity budget this year. And they may not be familiar with a charity budget, but everybody should have a charity budget as you budget everything else in your life. You should have a set amount of money every year that you're going to give to your favorite charities. And unfortunately say, you know, I've already used up that money or I've already designated my charities, but I'll definitely consider it in the new year. And ask as you wrap up the conversation, how can I spread the word for you? I really think this is a great cause. Can I put a link on Facebook? Can I send an email out to some friends? When is the race? Maybe I'll show up. Because yeah. then it's like saying, not just saying no and then brushing them off, it's saying no gently, but hey, how else can I help? And that's, I think, a really friendly way to deal with it. Yeah, especially for all your friends that running that run marathons or anything like that, to show up to the actual event, yeah. that shows support without giving money. Oh my gosh, and as personally someone who's ran a half marathon and having friends supporting you along the way, it makes a lot of difference, more than any $20 check. I mean, it'd be nice to support the charity, but I think um, it's, it's just a really great feel-good thing to do, and... Um, they're not going to think of you as a Scrooge because you've, you've ended it in a very nice way. Okay, this is something that's happened to me. <laughs> you know, I have the friend who's always asking me, how much did I pay for, you know, my clothes or my TV? And sometimes you just want to be like, you know, I don't want to tell you. Right. So what do you say? Well, you shouldn't have to say anything. And I think that some, if you want to keep it private, you should. So how you kind of skirt the situation you, sit, you talk around it. So, for example, if they're like, hey, lovely jacket, where'd you get it from? How much was it? You can be like, you know what? I love this jacket, and I probably spent more than I should have, but it was totally worth it. And then you switch the subject. What are you doing this weekend? You know? If this person is an earthling, they'll recognize that you don't want to continue the conversation beyond that, and they should respect that. And if they really insist, just be like, I don't remember, or it was a gift, or... You know, I don't keep track of these things. Because, you know, if they really want to know, they can go on Google and look for it themselves. We live in a very transparent world. People know how much we pay for our homes, our cars, our jewelry, our haircuts. So if they're that desperate to find out, rest assured they will. But you don't have to be the messenger. Well, before you go, Bryce, who works for this show, yes. has a Dickies money situation. Oh, no. Bryce, tell us what's going on my with situation. you. Okay, I live with a bunch of guys, okay? Yeah. And none of them have jobs. Uh, and all they want to... they pay rent? I, I don't want to get into that, but <laughs> the problem is they owe me money for electricity bill. And all they do uh, is sit around and play video games and crank the AC. So what is the best way to go about getting them to pay me the bills? Well, I think you... Have you addressed this at all? I'm I'm considering taking away all the equipment and like you know limiting like a electricity curfew as I like to call yeah. it Ooh, to wow. like you know like a lights off like at this time until you pay me the money. Wow! Yeah, it's a putting your foot down. <laughs> that is a very sticky situation, and unfortunately, because your name is on the bill, right. you're the only one really technically accountable for it. Yeah. So it's a lesson here in choosing the right roommates, and if this persists. You should look for a new place to live. Oh, already. Way okay. Ahead of it. <laughs> because you can pin up your roommates against the wall and right. you know really put the gun to their head. But at the end of the day, I was thinking about doing that. Too. You know, <laughs> if if are their names on the lease? No. Oh, well, hey, you could always threaten them with kicking them out. But yeah. they're your friends, and I don't think it should ever get to that level. Just say maybe um, if you can add on an extra few dollars to your rent money this year, or they can contribute to the groceries, or they can help you with. Bartering is a really great way to kind of make up for money that you don't have. Um, if there's something that you need a favor, get them to do it for you. If you need errands run, get them to do it for you. Save, have them save you time, maybe instead of money. Um, but in the long run, I think it's a it's a lesson here in choosing the right roommates, being clear on the terms, and they're probably doing a little bit of herding or like group think. You know, they, it's not just one roommate that's not paying; it's like three. They might like, you know, team up. 
Yeah. And yeah, so that's not good. That's not a healthy situation. So I think that they're, um they've got they're planning this. <laughs> yeah. Or what you could say is I'm not going to pay it. No. <laughs> well, it, it came to a point lights where off. Came, lights it, off. It came to a point where they were going to sh- like the elect- like Con Edison was going to turn off the electricity until we paid it. So I had a front like $300 or something and wow. yeah. Unfortunately, that's the, that's the kind <laughs> What's of situation. What's the way to like you know, you guys owe me money, or or else. Well, have you have you asked them outright for the money? Of course. And yeah. they just said we don't have it. They're like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll get it to you. You know, they just kind of postpone it. You know, they. Well, it, you know, it's different when you live with a bunch of roommates. I think in that situation, it's a bunch of guys. You got to be direct and be persistent and be a nag. Yeah. See, because it's I, your I, money. It's not my personality. Here. I'm such I'm such but a nice you know guy. What? But think of it like <laughs> this: they're taking advantage of you. They are. They're not being friends. So you need to retaliate, and not to say to play at their level, but honestly, you have bills to address, and it may not get you anywhere still. But it maybe they just haven't really understood the severity of the situation, you know. Um, and what you could say is, if the guys who don't pay, maybe you talk to the landlord, or you just say, "Well, I have to find new roommates." Yeah. I may have to find. Just say, threaten them with that. This isn't working out. You're not paying the bills. I have to find new roommates. And because you're the lease owner, you have the authority to kick them out. Nice. So <laughs> bring that up over the next couple of round of sure. beers you have with them and see what they say. Exactly. Be like, you know what, guys? I'm giving you 30 days. Yeah. I'm putting an ad on Craigslist. And if you cannot pay the bills, then I would suggest finding a new place to live. Your yeah. mom and dad's basement is looking great these days. <laughs> You know, I think that's a serious threat, and that's, a, a, I think, a position you should take. Right. That's my honest advice. Thanks, Brian. That's your Good advice. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll get to it eventually. You know, it's not always easy to give overarching umbrella advice when it comes to these sticky situations. So with him, it was sort of like, okay, well, have you talked to your roommates? Oh, you're the only one on the lease. Ha. Huh. Well, here's your in. So call me. I guess, you know, the moral of the story is that when it comes to money and friends, you have to think ahead and you have to, you know, get it in writing, get it in writing, set the expectations and take the emotion out of it. Whether you're giving them money or you're sharing a house or you're carpooling, set the expectations. You know, it's all to help everybody. It's not just to help you. It's, you know, if if his friends knew that the consequences would have been, you know, having to leave the apartment because they're not paying utilities maybe they would have thought twice about ditching him with the bill. So um, it's to help both parties, to have it in writing, to be articulate about what the expectations are so nobody's caught by surprise. Well, Bryce, are you going to take her advice? Yes, that's a yes. All right, well, thank you. (laughs) He's like, throw their clothes out of the window. (laughs) Well, thank you so much, Farnoosh, and uh, we really appreciate this advice, and hopefully you guys at home will take it.